The disability sector is in the grip of a funding crisis that's a tragedy waiting to happen, according to the New Zealand Disability Support Network. Its comments follow Checkpoint revealing Laura Ferguson Rehabilitation will be closing all its rehab and residential services in Auckland, Waikato and Wanganui by August, citing the Ministry of Health's refusal to provide more funding as a core reason for the closure. But the Ministry of Health says it never received any requests for extra funding from Laura Ferguson Rehabilitation, and is not aware of any other disability providers in financial difficulty. New Zealand Disability Support Network CEO Dr Garth Benny says many service providers are in constant contact with the Ministry over funding shortfalls. I was surprised at the assertion that there uh, don't appear to be many providers experiencing financial difficulties. The reality is much different than that. Um, The sector is in the midst of a a financial crisis that has been brewing for many years and our organisation is in weekly contact with the Ministry around a whole variety of funding issues um, uh, that we have with government funding, uh, both with the Ministry of Health and with the Ministry of Social Development, who also fund disability services. So what does that crisis look like, like in real terms? Well, what that means in practice is that providers are increasingly struggle, struggling with their own financial sustainability. <coughs> um, they are increasingly struggling to maintain the levels of quality and safety in their services that uh, they want to. Um, and in that sense, um, you know, we're talking about potential tragedies that are waiting to happen here. What do you mean by that? Well, I think it's increasingly difficult for providers to guarantee the kinds of quality and, and um, safety that they would like to see in their services. And, and, and uh, we see this unfolding in the kinds of discussions that providers are, are having with government um, around refusing to take um, uh, new referrals, some new referrals, because the, the funding on offer simply doesn't add up. And disabled people and families, of course, are finding it increasingly difficult to access the support they need. Um, It's a very complex system to navigate. Um, People often end up with support packages that uh, only contribute very partially to the actual needs that they have. Um, And uh, there are people on long wait lists. So when your concern is that there could be a tragedy, what what is that worst fear in reality? What would that be? Well, I, I, I'm not going to spell out a, in, any details in that. I don't, I don't want to speculate and I don't, I don't want to, you know, crystal ball gaze. But I think it's, it's important just to know that providers are increasingly finding it difficult to maintain the levels of quality and safety that they are in fact contracted to provide. And we would like to think that government uh, had a much more of a shared risk approach here because at the moment all the risk is sitting with providers. But and is it fair to say, Garth, and I'm sorry to interrupt, you, but is it fair to say that you are concerned someone could die because of lack of funding for services? Well, ultimately, that's that's a possibility. I'm not suggesting that's right around the corner, um, but certainly I am concerned about the compromises that that could be made around quality and safety. How much does the sector need, in your view? Well, we released a paper at the end of last year where we indicated that we thought the sector was short by around $574 million. We don't expect the government to close that gap (coughs) in one step, but we um, desperately need government to start making inroads into those funding shortfalls with the upcoming budget. So obviously they announced significant spending in the last couple of weeks, $12 billion for infrastructure. So what do you think of that when you sit there wanting more money? Well, the message that sends to this sector is that the government doesn't ha- in fact have the money, uh, but we are left wondering about government's priorities. Um, 12 billion versus 574 million. I mean, this should be uh, really straightforward. It's a cri- funding crisis that has been brewing for more than a decade. Um, uh, and g- going back even further than that probably as well. So we, we think it's long overdue for government to step up. Um, <coughs> I also want to clarify that the additional funding that was made available in last year's budget merely covered off the deficit that the sector had run up in the previous financial year and that deficit is, is looming again. So we're, we're, we're treading water here.
What does that shortfall of 574 million that you want, what does that translate to every day for families who need these services? What does that look like? Well, what it means is that families and individuals with disability find accessing support increasingly complex and problematic. It's likely that they will find it difficult to navigate the system in the first place. Uh, in our report, we indicated that there are around 25% of disabled people in New Zealand who aren't getting any access at all to the services and supports that they need. Those that do enter the system uh, often experience uh, long delays and waits, and in the end, end up with support packages that are only a contribution to what they actually need. The Ministry of Health has said categorically that it's been talking to the disability sector and is willing to work with the disability sector to help and find solutions and it's unaware of any other provider that is going to the wall financially. So do you accept that? I don't accept that. I find that very difficult to believe. Um, I know that there are many providers, as I've already said, who are in fairly constant contact with the Ministry over their funding difficulties, whether that be around negotiating uh, funding packages for particular individuals where they know the costs simply don't add up. So how many do you think? Could you put a number on it? I couldn't put a number on it. And are any of them on the brink of collapse? Um, providers find their way into financial difficulties through a, through a number of different um, uh, circumstances. Um, I think there will be a small number right now who are on the brink of um, financial uncertainty. They will be um, thinking about, and I know that there are providers that are thinking about exiting whole programs, uh, withdrawing for, from some contracts, uh, as Laura Ferguson uh, Trust has done. Um, I know that there are providers giving serious thought to charging fees to recoup some of the costs, which is simply, you know, uh, that's not acceptable, but providers are, are left with very few options here. How much more pressure will that place on families then if they have to find their own money to oh, fund those services. Well, exactly, and so uh, providers that are considering doing that are doing so extremely reluctantly. Uh, around, it's around trying to find a way of providing some service as opposed to no service at all. Well, we're a matter of months away from a budget, so what's your message? Uh, our overwhelming message is that it's time for government to deliver, it's time for government to take seriously the concerns of the sector, it is in crisis um, and I just hope that it doesn't take a series of tragedies to wake everyone up here. And that was Dr Garth Benny, the CEO of New Zealand Disability Support Network. And he says there's about 40,000 New Zealanders receiving disability funding through the Ministries of Health and Social Development. And that number doesn't include people who are supported through ACC.